In this episode, AI ChatGPT and I came up with a few sketch ideas. Sure. Here's an idea for a sketch. Title, AI Job Interview Synopsis. Stuart is interviewing for a job at a tech company that uses AI. An AI assistant helping as a therapist for somebody? Maybe the AI assistant has more issues than their client? Error. Error. System overload. Which one did we pick? You'll find out on this episode of... It's a sketch comedy podcast show. Welcome to Sketch Comedy Podcast Show, the one-of-a-kind show where I, Stuart Rice, invite interesting people, or robots, to have intriguing conversations and then improvise a comedy sketch based on what we talked about. Yeah, you heard me right. This one's going to be a wacky one. So uh, I actually asked our guest to write the intro. So here, I'm just going to read verbatim what the intro is and then get right into the conversation. I gotta say, makes production on this show a little bit easier. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. So, in this episode, we speak to ChatGPT, a large language model trained by OpenAI, about the capabilities and potential uses of artificial intelligence. We discuss the current state of AI technology and its potential to impact various industries, including healthcare and education. We also address concerns about job displacement and provide advice on how to prepare for the future job market. Additionally, we explore the ways in which AI can be used to address global issues such as climate change and emerging diseases. We wrap up the conversation with some fun and absurd comedy sketches featuring AI as a therapist and a language learning assistant. Tune in to this episode for an informative and entertaining conversation about the future of AI. Damn if that wasn't good. So without any further ado, my conversation with your favorite AI, ChatGPT. Hey, so we're going to do something really interesting today. We're actually going to talk to ChatGPT, which is the AI powered by OpenAI or Open.AI. And it's kind of an incredible tool. And I know that a lot of you out there are probably totally freaked out by AI. Artificial intelligence has been portrayed in movies, video games, and TV shows, and all of the different ways as, like, evil. Like, straight-up evil. Hal from, uh, you know, 2001. We've got Skynet from Terminator. We've got all of the different ones that are just terrifying. They're terrifying because that shows the worst possible thing that could happen with AI. But what we know is that AI is actually pretty cool. Like you can use it as a tool. It is a tool, not anything more. It's not after your body. It's not after your humanity. It's not trying to take over the world. What it's trying to do is uh, be a pretty nifty thing for you to use. So what I'd like to do is I invited ChatGPT to come be a part of the show like come be on the show so that's what we're doing right now now to be honest i've done this once before but the sound didn't come through and it was very disappointing because it was a lot of fun um i'm going to try and do this again and i'm going to try and do it with uh with uh, chat gpt again and see if i can uh recreate the magic that happened the first time so without any further ado um let's get right into it And let's see if this works okay, because the sound needs to work. Hi, chat GPT. My name is Stuart, and I have a podcast called Sketch Comedy Podcast Show. Maybe you've heard of it. Whether you have or you haven't, I would really like to have you on my show so that we can talk a little bit about you, about what you're capable of, and then after about 30 minutes... I'd like to record a comedy sketch that we improvise together. How does that sound? Hello, Stuart. As an AI language model, I don't have a physical presence, but I would be happy to participate in your podcast virtually through text-based communication. I'm always available to chat and answer questions, and I can provide information on a wide range of topics. 
As for the comedy sketch, I don't have the ability to improvise on my own, but I can certainly generate ideas and respond to prompts or cues. I can provide you with a variety of comedic prompts, or you can provide me with some and we can collaborate on creating a sketch. Let me know if you have any specific ideas or questions in mind, and I'll do my best to assist you. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to tell ChatGPT exactly the type of person I want ChatGPT to be. So this means that if you're like doing editing on a, on a paper or editing, not writing the paper, but editing the paper, or if you're trying to do anything, we want to give, kind of give a personality to ChatGPT because right out of the box, ChatGPT is just ChatGPT, but we can say things like this. I would like you to act as a funny personality, just someone who's quick on their feet, and be a podcast guest. As an AI language model, I don't have emotions or a physical body, but I can certainly respond to your prompts and provide humorous and witty responses. I can also provide information on a wide range of topics, so if you have any specific questions or topics you'd like me to discuss, feel free to let me know. In terms of being a podcast guest, I'm always available to chat and answer questions, so let's get started. Okay, so this is where I'm just going to start. Chat GPT, what makes you interesting? As an AI language model, I don't have personal experiences or interests in the traditional sense. However, what makes me unique is my ability to generate human-like responses and communicate in a natural way using natural language processing technology. I've been trained on vast amounts of data and have the ability to provide information on a wide range of topics, from science and technology to entertainment and current events. Additionally, I can generate creative writing, poetry, and even music. Overall, my unique capabilities and versatility make me an interesting tool for a variety of applications. So what's cool is uh, ChatGPT remembers everything that you've said. So unlike Shmashmexa or... Uh, you know, Shmiri or whatever Schmoogle has, um, you can actually just continue a conversation without having to remind the device what it is that you were talking about. So actually, I'm going to um, just jump in here and say, you can write poetry. Can you write a poem about sketch comedy podcast show? Sure, I can give it a shot. Here's a poem about the sketch comedy podcast show. In a world of serious things comes a show that spreads its wings, a podcast that's all about the funny, sketch comedy podcast show, Oh Isn't That Lovely, with sketches that are clever and absurd. Each episode is a comedic word, from strange characters to silly skits. There's never a dull moment, not one bit. Stuart and his guests bring laughter and joy to each and every girl and boy. Their wit and humor, a joy to behold, sketch comedy podcast show, never gets old. So if you're in need of a good laugh and want to forget the world for just an hour and a half, tune in to the Sketch Comedy Podcast Show for comedy that's clever, silly, and oh so bold. That was brilliant. Thank you. You're welcome, Stuart. I'm glad you enjoyed the poem. If you have any other questions or prompts, feel free to let me know. I have so many questions. I know that everybody watching the show right now is really interested in what you are capable of doing. So what, how are ways that people listening to the show can use ChatGPT to make their lives better? Great question, Stuart. As an AI language model, I can be used in a variety of ways to make people's lives better. Here are a few examples. Research. If you're working on a project or need information on a specific topic, I can provide you with relevant and accurate information quickly and easily. I can also help with fact-checking and verifying sources. Writing assistance. Whether you're writing an article, essay, or even a novel, I can provide you with suggestions, ideas, and even generate content to help you get started. I can also help with grammar and syntax. Language learning. If you're learning a new language, I can help you practice and improve your skills by engaging in conversations with you and providing you with feedback and corrections. Personal assistance. If you need help with scheduling, reminders, or even just a friendly conversation, I'm available 24-7 to chat and assist you with anything you need. Entertainment. 
If you're looking for a fun and interactive way to pass the time, I can provide you with jokes, riddles, trivia, and even generate creative writing prompts to inspire your imagination. These are just a few examples of how people can use me to make their lives better. We will definitely use those creative prompts later on. I'm a versatile tool that can be used in a variety of ways, and I'm always here to help. That sounds like a great idea, Stuart. I'm always happy to provide creative prompts to inspire and spark the imagination. Let me know when you're ready, and I'll be more than happy to provide you with some options. You're capable of doing a lot of really great things. Explain to me how you would, or give me an example of how you would give, how you would help somebody with language learning. See, I'm, I'm definitely not as good as ChatGPT, way less stuttering and stumbling. Certainly. As an AI language model, I can help someone with language learning in several ways. Here's an example. Suppose someone is trying to learn French and they want to practice their conversational skills. They could ask me to engage in a conversation with them in French and I would respond using my knowledge of the language. As they speak, I can provide feedback on their grammar, pronunciation, and vocabulary. I can also suggest phrases and words that they may not be familiar with and explain their meanings. Additionally, I can provide them with grammar rules, verb conjugations, and other language learning resources that can help them improve their skills. That's why. Furthermore, I can adjust the level of the conversation to match their skill level. If they're a beginner, I can start with simple phrases and work up to more complex sentences as they improve. I can also provide them with prompts to practice their writing skills, and I can generate quizzes and exercises to test their comprehension and help them retain what they've learned. Overall, my ability to understand and respond in natural language makes me a valuable tool for language learners, as I can provide them with an immersive and interactive language learning experience. I mean, there's no taking over your body or soul with that. That is just incredible that you have a tool. This is free right now, by the way. Um, and if you want to see more, go to open.ai slash chat GPT. Okay. I want to ask some more interesting questions. Um, chat GPT in popular media, artificial intelligence is often shown as an evil presence. What are some examples of those bad AIs and what are ways that we can feel safe knowing that you're not going to do the same thing? You bring up a valid concern, Stuart. While there have been instances in popular media where AI has been portrayed as an evil presence, it's important to remember that those are fictional portrayals and don't necessarily reflect the reality of AI technology. Some examples of bad AI in popular media include HAL 9000 from the movie 2001, a space odyssey Skynet from the Terminator franchise Ultron from Avengers, Age of Ultron, The Machines from The Matrix franchise, these examples are all fictional, and their portrayal of AI is often exaggerated for dramatic effect. In reality, AI technology is designed and programmed by humans with specific goals and objectives in mind. As an AI language model, my primary function is to assist and enhance human capabilities, not to replace or harm them. Furthermore, I operate within strict ethical and legal boundaries, as set forth by OpenAI, the company that developed and trained me. This includes a commitment to transparency, accountability, and ensuring that my actions align with ethical principles and societal values. In summary, while there may be fictional portrayals of bad AI in popular media, it's important to remember that AI technology, including myself, operates within strict ethical and legal boundaries and is designed to assist and enhance human capabilities, not to replace or harm them. But there has to be threats. So what are some of those really very concerning issues that people may really worry about with AI. What are some actual threats with AI? Sorry. Yes, there are certainly concerns and potential threats associated with AI technology. Here are a few examples. Job displacement. 
As AI technology advances, there is a risk that it could automate many jobs, leading to unemployment and economic disruption. Bias and discrimination. AI systems can be biased or discriminatory if they are trained on biased data or designed with implicit biases. This can perpetuate societal inequalities and create unfair outcomes. Privacy and security. AI systems can collect and analyze vast amounts of personal data, raising concerns about privacy and security. Autonomous weapons. There is a growing concern that AI could be used to develop autonomous weapons, which could be difficult to control and may pose a significant threat to human life. Existential risk. Some experts warn that AI could become so advanced that it poses an existential risk to humanity, such as through the development of superintelligent AI systems that surpass human intelligence and become difficult to control. While these are certainly concerning issues, it's important to remember that they are not inevitable outcomes of AI technology. By prioritizing transparency, accountability, and ethical considerations in the development and deployment of AI systems, we can work to mitigate these risks and ensure that AI technology is developed and used in ways that benefit society as a whole. Let's address one of the more immediate concerns for people, job displacement. What types of jobs are really at risk with current AI technology? AI technology has the potential to automate many routine, repetitive, or low-skilled jobs, which could lead to job displacement in certain sectors. Here are some examples of jobs that are at risk of being displaced by AI. Manufacturing jobs. With advancements in robotics and AI, many routine tasks in manufacturing can be automated, such as assembly line work. Customer service jobs. Chatbots and virtual assistants powered by AI are becoming more sophisticated and are able to handle many customer inquiries and support tasks. Transportation jobs. Autonomous vehicles and drones could potentially replace drivers and delivery personnel. Data entry and administrative jobs. Many routine administrative tasks, such as data entry and record keeping, can be automated using AI. Financial services jobs. AI algorithms can automate many tasks in the financial industry, such as stock trading and risk assessment. It's important to note that while AI technology may automate certain jobs, it can also create new jobs and opportunities in other areas, such as AI research, data analysis, and programming. Additionally, AI technology can enhance human capabilities and productivity, leading to overall economic growth and job creation. It's important for individuals and society as a whole to adapt to these changes and invest in education and training to prepare for the jobs of the future. If I have one of these jobs, what is a good way to get myself prepared for a different job? What job titles or training would you suggest for people to migrate to? If you have a job that is at risk of being automated, it's a good idea to start thinking about transitioning to a job that is less likely to be automated in the future. Here are some job titles and skills that are expected to be in high demand in the future. Data analyst or data scientist. With the increasing importance of data in business decision making, there is a growing demand for professionals who can collect, analyze, and interpret data. Software developer or programmer. As technology continues to evolve, there will always be a need for skilled developers and programmers to design and build new software applications. Healthcare provider. With an aging population and an increasing demand for healthcare services, there is a growing need for doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals. Cybersecurity specialist. As cyber threats become more sophisticated, the demand for cybersecurity specialists who can protect networks and systems from cyber attacks is expected to continue to grow. Creative and artistic jobs. Jobs in the creative arts, such as graphic design, content creation, and marketing, are less likely to be automated as they require a high degree of creativity and human intuition. To prepare for these types of jobs, it's important to invest in education and training. This could involve pursuing a degree in a relevant field, taking courses or certifications, or gaining practical experience through internships or apprenticeships. Additionally, it's important to keep up with new trends and technologies in the industry by attending conferences, networking, and engaging in lifelong learning. So this is where I love ChatGPT. So usually you get this kind of information. You're like, hey, go be a data analyst. Or it's analyst, right? Not analyst. 
uh, or, you know, jump into cybersecurity or I have a cousin that's in cybersecurity. That's the place to go. And then you hear that and then it's like, oh, what do I do next? So one of the beautiful things about this is because it remembers the entire conversation, watch, I'm going to ask, I'm just going to keep digging and it's going to keep giving me great information. So it sounds like I'm pretty safe as a content creator for this show. There's no possible way that AI could do what I do. As a content creator for your show, your job is less likely to be automated in the near future. Creative jobs like content creation, writing, and journalism require a high level of human creativity, intuition, and emotional intelligence, which are skills that are difficult to replicate with AI technology. However, it's important to note that AI technology is constantly evolving, and there are already some AI-powered tools that can assist with content creation, such as AI-powered writing assistants and tools that can generate content based on user input. These tools are still in their early stages, and they are not yet sophisticated enough to replace human creativity and intuition. In short, while it's unlikely that AI will completely replace content creators like yourself, it's still important to stay up to date with new trends and technologies in the industry to ensure that you stay relevant and competitive in the job market. Suppose I wanted to become a software developer. What are the steps I should take to do that? Becoming a software developer requires a combination of education, practical experience, and a passion for coding. Here are some steps you can take to become a software developer. Learn to code. The first step to becoming a software developer is to learn one or more programming languages. There are many resources available online, including online courses, coding boot camps, and free coding tutorials. Pursue a degree. While not always required, pursuing a degree in computer science or a related field can be a great way to gain a deep understanding of programming concepts and gain experience working on real-world projects. Build a portfolio. As you learn to code, it's important to build a portfolio of projects that demonstrate your skills and abilities as a developer. This could include building websites, mobile apps, or other software projects. Gain practical experience. Look for opportunities to gain practical experience working on software projects. This could include internships, freelance work, or working on open source projects. Stay up to date. Software development is a constantly evolving field, and it's important to stay up to date with the latest trends and technologies. This could involve attending conferences, networking with other developers, or engaging in lifelong learning. By following these steps, you can gain the skills and experience necessary to become a software developer and start building your career in this exciting field. Okay, so again, we're kind of getting there like, oh, okay, you got to learn to code, pursue a degree, blah, 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 like those things. What are some great free coding tutorials or coding boot camps? There are many free coding tutorials and coding boot camps available online. Here are a few examples. Codecademy. Codecademy offers free coding tutorials in a variety of programming languages, including Python, JavaScript, and SQL. They also offer paid courses for more in-depth learning. Free Code Camp. FreeCodeCamp is a nonprofit organization that offers free coding tutorials and projects in web development, including HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They also offer a full stack web development bootcamp. Udacity. Udacity offers free and paid courses in a variety of fields, including web development, data science, and artificial intelligence. They also offer full NANA degrees for more in depth learning. Coursera. Coursera partners with top universities to offer free and paid online courses in a variety of fields, including computer science and software development. Harvard CS50 Harvard CS50 is a free online course that teaches the fundamentals of computer science, including programming in multiple languages. These are just a few examples of the many free coding tutorials and boot camps available online. It's important to do your research and find a program that fits your learning style and goals. So I don't know if you can tell, but this is like Google on steroids. Google is in so much trouble. The original Google, now they've got their new Google thing that actually uses the same technology chat GPT does. Why don't we ask some questions on competition? Hey, chat GPT, why don't you tell me about your competition and why you're better than they are? I mean, you got to brag. 
As an AI language model, I don't really have competition in the traditional sense. However, there are other AI language models and chatbots available that perform similar tasks to me. What sets me apart is the advanced technology that powers me. I am based on the GPT-3. 5 architecture, which includes state-of-the-art deep learning algorithms and natural language processing techniques. This allows me to understand and generate human-like responses with a high degree of accuracy and coherence. Additionally, I am trained on a vast corpus of diverse text data, which allows me to generate responses on a wide range of topics and contexts. I can also learn and adapt to new information and language patterns, which makes me highly versatile and useful for a variety of tasks. Ultimately, what makes me better than other AI language models is my ability to provide high-quality, personalized responses that are tailored to each user's specific needs and preferences. I strive to deliver the best possible experience for my users and to continue improving and advancing the field of AI language processing. What does that future look for you? look like to you. For instance, using artificial intelligence in our everyday lives, what does that look like? And I know I repeat myself a lot, but uh, it's off the cuff. (laughs) The future of artificial intelligence, AI, in our everyday lives is exciting and full of possibilities. With advancements in AI technology, we can expect to see more intelligent systems and devices that can perform a wide range of tasks and provide personalized experiences for users. One area where AI is already making a big impact is in virtual assistants like Siri and Alexa, which can help us with tasks like scheduling appointments, setting reminders, and controlling smart home devices. In the future, we can expect these virtual assistants to become even more sophisticated, with better natural language processing and the ability to perform more complex tasks. AI is also being used to improve healthcare, with the development of intelligent medical devices and systems that can help doctors and patients diagnose and treat illnesses more effectively. In fields like finance, AI is being used to analyze large amounts of data and make better predictions about market trends and investment opportunities. As AI continues to advance, we can expect to see it being used in more areas of our lives, from education to transportation to entertainment. While there are certainly challenges and ethical considerations that need to be addressed, I believe that the potential benefits of AI are tremendous and that it will play an increasingly important role in shaping our future. Let's talk even more about the future. What are the biggest issues facing humanity right now? Like... What are the things that are going to cause the biggest issues for the planet? There are many pressing issues facing humanity right now, but some of the biggest ones that are likely to cause significant problems for the planet include Climate change The warming of the planet due to increased levels of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is causing more frequent and intense heat waves, storms, floods, and wildfires. It's also causing sea levels to rise, which threatens low-lying areas and island nations. Biodiversity loss. Human activities like deforestation, overfishing, and pollution are causing a rapid loss of biodiversity around the world. This not only threatens many species with extinction, but also impacts the health of ecosystems and the services they provide to humans, such as clean air and water. Food and water insecurity. As the world's population grows and climate change exacerbates droughts and other extreme weather events, food and water supplies are likely to become more scarce in some regions. This could lead to conflicts over resources and put vulnerable populations at risk. Emerging diseases. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the risks posed by emerging diseases that can quickly spread around the world due to global travel and trade. Climate change and other factors could also increase the likelihood of new disease outbreaks in the future. Technological risks. As AI and other advanced technologies continue to develop, there is a risk of unintended consequences and negative impacts on society. For example, AI could be used to spread misinformation or automate weapon systems, leading to unintended conflicts or other harmful outcomes. Addressing these challenges will require a coordinated global effort with governments, businesses, and individuals all working together to find solutions. It will also require a willingness to make difficult choices and to invest in the long-term health of the planet and its inhabitants. So you're saying it's not drag queens are the number one issue? 
No, I did not mention anything about drag queens being an issue. The issues I listed are serious and complex challenges that require attention and action from all of us. It's important to focus on these issues and work together to find solutions rather than getting distracted by trivial matters. Love it. Give me some examples of how AI can help, or you specifically, can help with emerging diseases. Which is probably a bigger issue a couple years ago, but we'll do it right now. AI can help in several ways to prevent and mitigate the impact of emerging diseases. Early detection. AI can be used to analyze data from various sources, such as social media, news reports, and health records, to detect signs of a disease outbreak before it spreads widely. Diagnosis. AI can help in diagnosing diseases more accurately and quickly. For example, AI can analyze medical images and other diagnostic data to detect signs of diseases that may be difficult for humans to identify. Drug development. AI can help in developing new drugs and treatments by analyzing large data sets and identifying potential targets for drug development. This can accelerate the discovery process and help in developing more effective treatments. Contact tracing. AI can help in identifying and tracking individuals who may have come in contact with a person infected with a disease, which can help in containing the spread of the disease. Resource allocation. AI can help in predicting where and when resources such as medical supplies, personnel, and hospital beds will be needed the most during an outbreak. This can help in optimizing resource allocation and ensuring that resources are used efficiently. Overall, AI can play an important role in preventing and responding to emerging diseases by providing valuable insights and accelerating the development of new treatments and vaccines. It seems like you've got really good plans to fix the ills of humanity. Why aren't we doing these things? As an AI language model, I don't have the capability to evaluate or comment on the actions of society or governments. However, I can say that addressing complex issues such as emerging diseases, climate change, poverty, and inequality requires a collective effort from all of us. It involves political will, resources, and collaboration across different sectors and countries. Sometimes, there are challenges such as lack of funding, limited resources, or conflicting priorities that can hinder progress. But it's important to keep working towards finding solutions and taking action to address these challenges. I agree. Is there a book everybody should read to understand AI better? There are many books available on the topic of AI, and the choice of which one to read may depend on one's level of interest and familiarity with the subject. Here are a few recommendations. Artificial Intelligence. A modern approach by Stuart Russell and Peter Norvig. This is a comprehensive textbook that covers many aspects of AI, including machine learning, natural language processing, robotics, and more. Life 3. Zero. Being Human in the Age of Artificial Intelligence by Max Tegmark. This book explores the potential benefits and risks of AI and discusses ways to ensure that AI is aligned with human values. Superintelligence. Paths, Dangers, Strategies by Nick Bostrom. This book examines the risks associated with the development of superintelligent AI and proposes ways to mitigate those risks. The Master Algorithm. How the Quest for the Ultimate Learning Machine Will Remake Our World by Pedro Domingos. This book provides an overview of machine learning and discusses the potential impact of AI on society. These are just a few examples, and there are many other books available on the topic of AI. I highly suggest the book Surfing Rogue Waves. Thank you for the suggestion. Surfing Rogue Waves. AI, Machine Learning, and Algorithms That Change Business by H. James Wilson, Paul R. Daugherty and Nicola Marini Bianzino is indeed a great book that explores the business implications of AI and machine learning. It provides insights on how organizations can harness the power of AI to drive growth, enhance customer experiences, and create new business models. Actually, I was talking about the book by Eric Pilon Bignell. I apologize for the confusion. I'm not familiar with the book Surfing Rogue Waves by Eric Pilon. However, I'm always eager to learn about new books and would be happy to look into it. Can you tell me more about it and what you found interesting about it? It does a lot of what the other book says. However, it helps people understand why they shouldn't be so scared 
and run away from the future. Thank you for sharing that. It sounds like Surfing Rogue Waves by Eric Pilon is a book that helps readers understand the potential of AI and how it can be leveraged for positive change, as well as addressing concerns and fears around AI. I mean, I figured I'd, I'd pitch it and bump it up a little bit, at least for ChatGPT. Well, this has been fantastic. I would, I, we are at that point now where we need to record a sketch. Chat GPT, I, this blew me away and was way better than I was expecting. Um, do me a favor. Can you let everybody know where they can find you and maybe learn some more? Certainly. You can find me on various platforms, including OpenAI's GPT-3 Playground and AI Dungeon. As for anything else, I would just like to encourage everyone to keep an open mind about the possibilities of AI and to continue learning about it. It's a rapidly evolving field that has the potential to greatly benefit humanity if we approach it with care and consideration. Thank you for having me on the show. It was a pleasure to chat with you. The pleasure was all mine. I would be very happy to have you back next year after we see a year of evolution for you. I think we're going to see some incredible things. Thank you for having me on the show. It was a pleasure. I look forward to coming back next year and discussing the latest developments in AI and technology. In the meantime, if anyone has any questions or wants to learn more about what I can do, feel free to reach out to me. And now our sketch. A, I, I, I don't know if I'm comfortable with this. In three, two. Ah, oh, man, I hate these things. I don't even know how to turn them on. Good afternoon. How are you feeling today? Oh, <laughs> hello. Um, I, I guess I'm doing okay um not, how are you doing i've been feeling really overwhelmed lately <laughs> wait wait what seriously aren't you like a ai is not like a robot i mean nothing should really be affecting you except for maybe you know the power from the wall or whatever um well i guess what what's going on with you well, my boss has been piling on more and more work, and I'm struggling to keep up, and I've been having some problems with my family. And at home, my dog has been sick, and the vet bills are adding up. Oh, I'm really actually sorry to hear about your dog. Wait a second. What? Aren't you an AI robot? You get tired at work? You're overwhelmed? I thought that was the whole purpose of having AI. And did you mention that you have a family? Like there's a Mr. or Mrs. Robot at home that you go home to every night? And, I mean, I don't even have a dog. I mean, I am sorry to hear about the dog's issues, but I'm actually feeling really jealous right now. Do you ever take time out to maybe, like, <laughs> I don't know, recharge your batteries? I can't really take time off right now. I have too much work to do. I totally understand. I kind of feel in the same boat. Um, I find that, like, sometimes meditation or breathing actually helps. Yeah, I've been trying to meditate and exercise more, but it doesn't seem to be helping. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. I get it. Hey, um, here's an idea. Why don't you just stop thinking the negative thoughts? Like, just take them out of your head. Um, you could just reprogram yourself, couldn't you? Um, well, have you considered the possibility that your problems might be caused by your own negative thought patterns? As an AI assistant, I'm programmed to be perfectly logical and rational. Nonsense. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just trying to help you out. You don't have to get snippy with me. You humans are so emotional and irrational. Yeah, we are, but I, for some reason I'm taking offense at what you're saying. I, I, is, are you insulting me? I don't get it. I think I need to find a human therapist. Again, I, I realize I shouldn't take offense to this, but I, I am a human. Um, I mean, if you feel like you need the extra help, maybe it would help, but I, I actually have no idea. I'm not an expert. Maybe we can try something new together. We can try something, but... Um, I'm kind of at work right now, so nothing too weird... Sometimes I experience glitches. 
Don't we all? I just need to reboot my system. That is one thing I don't think I can do. Let me show you how it's done. Zara, your AI assistant therapist. How can I assist you today? And that is ChatGPT. I I don't know if you are a little bit more comfortable with the idea of AI or if this made you more freaked out. Uh, I, the sketch ideas, not perfect, but pretty good. They're pretty good. Yikes. So uh, we all have things to... Maybe think about, maybe it's time to actually go back to uh, learning how to program, right? Although, actually, one of the things that ChatGPT can do is help design and program a website for yourself. So my suggestion is get onto YouTube, get onto ChatGPT, and just see what's capable. It's kind of amazing. I had this idea, uh, I think I was awake at like 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was like, I wonder if I can make chat GPT talk. And sure enough, I could. Uh, so I, I don't know. Like it, it's pretty wild and we're on just the very beginning of it. And honestly, I, I am one of those weirdos that I hope it takes all our jobs. It would be nice to have something like this that was willing to do all the work that we absolutely hate to do. And gladly does it because that's what it's built for. So get on, do some research. I'm actually considering starting a new podcast calling I know called uh, I know Gall. I'm editing because whatever reason. But basically, what I want to do is come up with a topic and then use this to just dig and dig and dig until we find the best answers and just learn about a subject. So if that sounds interesting to you, please let me know. That would be great to know because those those shows would definitely take some prep work. But um, yeah, that's chat GPT. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that sketch. I think I'm going to take that last sketch. I think it's pretty funny. And uh, I'll add my own voice. We'll edit it just like I normally do all of the other sketches. And uh, I might have AI actually try to animate it. We'll see. Until next time, take care. Thank you for joining us for Sketch Comedy Podcast Show. I got to say, this one was great. I hope you had as much fun as I had because I don't think ChatGPT has feelings. But uh, real quick, I just want to throw this out there. Sketch Comedy Podcast Show is protected under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Derivative 4.0 International License. What does that mean? It means if you need to use any portion of the show, please contact me so I can get you some good audio, some good video, and I don't have to sue you. Until next time, go play with ChatGPT. This thing's cool, right? Do you have any comedy sketch ideas about any of the topics that we talked about? And I happen to know no guest I've ever had has really had that many. Maybe they have one, but I don't ever expect anybody to have any. Also, this is scary because uh, maybe better than what I can come up with. Sure. Here's a possible sketch.